Hi everybody, Dr. Zach here. I uh, hope that you're all having an amazing day. Uh, we are here at the Lifehouse and uh, looking forward to getting back to things this afternoon to, to serve more people. I had a couple things I wanted to share today that I thought were really quite interesting. One of them is, is actually a statistic that I saw and I, I haven't been able to confirm this myself. If anybody's been on the CDC website, has looked at some of the data they put out there, I think that maybe purposely they're trying to, to keep things confused because they have lots of different um, stats that make it really hard just to get a clear picture of what's going on. But here's an article from Dr. David Samandi. This is a medical doctor and he posted that according to the CDC, through the end of July this year, 2020, the average number of total deaths in the United States per day was 7,434. Um, that's a lot of people dying, but you know, recognize we're a country of 360 million people or something like that. So 7,400 deaths per day is what we've been averaging this year. Um, and given the fact that we're in a pandemic and we've got all of this, um, you know, the COVID stuff that's going on, um, it makes you think, well, gosh, maybe that's why that number is so high. He goes on to say that according to the CDC, looking back at, at stats from 2017, it says that there were an average of, average of more than 7,700 deaths per day through July of 2017. So if we go back just three years and we look at the same time frame, January through July, we see almost 300 more deaths per day in 2017 than we have in 2020. And I've talked about this before in that, you know, if this is a pandemic, then we would see a major number of increased deaths um, total, right? Um, it's interesting is if you take a look at the statistics from New York, when they were at the, the peak of COVID deaths, you saw the heart disease and cancer almost completely disappeared. And I, that comes back to just another challenge we have with the way that we're keeping stats is that the CDC admits themselves that they're keeping track of people that die with COVID-19, not from COVID-19. And there can be a big difference in that. There are people dying from COVID-19, um, but there's also a lot of people dying from heart disease and cancer and diabetes and old age and all kinds of stuff with COVID-19 or presumed to have COVID-19 that are being thrown into that as well. So anyway, the bottom line is, is that we're actually seeing 300 less deaths per day this year compared to three years ago. Um, three years ago, I don't remember being shut down. I don't remember having schools closed. I don't remember having businesses closed down. I read the other day that in Denver, 35% of the restaurants in Denver are now shuttered. They've closed the doors permanently. 65% uh, of the restaurants in Denver say they, they're not going to make it six months, which means we're almost to that point from when they originally shut down. Um, so we see a major catastrophic effect on our economy, on our education systems, um, if you're a college sports fan like me, you're seeing that you're not going to be able to watch college football this year. So we got lots and lots of things that are totally different and less people have died. Um, so again, just food for thought. I came up with another article. and I'm going to actually put the link to this. This is actually statistics. It's a, a statistical graph from the CDC that talks about the, the deaths in different age groups of people here in the United States from COVID-19. Um, so here's what we know, according to, to the CDC's information. Um, 85%, 85 years of age and older, that makes up 3.2% of our U.S. population, and that accounts for 33% of all the COVID deaths. So these are people that are 85 and older. 75 and older, that's just 7% of the U.S. population. That's almost 60% of the deaths. We start getting to 54 and younger, that's 70% uh, of the population. So that's the biggest majority of, a, of the population. That's 8% of the deaths. So we see that you know, if, you're, if you're over 55, you're, you're, you've got a greater risk. But as I was going down and looking at things, it says deaths don't even register in the percentage brackets until you get to the age of 15 to 24. So less than 15, it's, it's just a fraction of a percent. Um, you get to the points to where we're looking at the later teenage years, early college years, and it's 0.2%. Um, so it's a really small number still. But as I started putting all the pieces together and looking at this, the median age of COVID deaths is 78. 
So you look at all the numbers from the graph here and you look at where that is. The average um, age of somebody who dies from COVID-19 in the United States is 78. And I thought that was kind of interesting because I know that in the research that I've seen recently, it talks about how we see a lot of countries whose life expectancy is increasing. We see China's is on the increase. We see a lot of the, the first world countries that are on increase and even a lot of the third world countries. Um, over the last five, six, seven years, the United States is one of the few first world countries that their life expectancy is stable or it actually is decreasing. So I looked to see what the current life expectancy is in the United States, and it turns out that it's 78. So we look at the numbers and we see not a drastically increased number of deaths this year compared to previous years where there wasn't a pandemic. In fact, even less than some recent years. Um, we see that the median age of, of people that are dying with or from COVID-19 is 78, which is the average life expectancy that people are living to in the country anyway. And then we look at what impact that's had. So I'm putting this out there as basically just more food for thought, which is what I've been working on doing for the past several months, because I want to stimulate thinking. I don't want to tell you what to think. I just want to give you some stuff to chew on and try to figure out, you know, are we going the right direction? Are we listening to the right stories? Are we, should we still be in a state of fear? Should we still be walking around social distancing and staying away from people when there's less people dying now than there was in 2017 when we were hugging each other and high-fiving each other and going to ball games together and going out to restaurants and staying out past 10 o'clock and not wearing masks and you know coughing into our arm instead of coughing into a mask and are we doing better are we going the right direction are we listening to the right voices or are we maybe being led in a direction that we might not want to go to? Are we being fed a story that our new normal is going to look a lot different than what we've been used to because we really do have a health crisis and because we really are in a situation where our survival is being challenged and threatened? Something to think about. So till next time, this is Dr. Zach. Um, if you have some, some feedback, some comments, I'd love to hear what you're thinking.